Last time, we spoke of what love may or may not entail. It has since then been on my mind to offer you an example of what loving the unlovable looks like in my own life. And that is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor and richly satisfying. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Now, let me start by saying that this is by no means a complete picture or a sum total of how this is accomplished in my life. This is but one example. There are many ways in which this happens, as there will be in your own life. I simply want to offer this to you well, as a starting point, a, a, a point of reference for you to enter into a conversation with God and to explore the different ways that you can now show God's love to other people. Anyway, the example that I'm sharing in this video is that of one who has recently cheated me out of some money. Now, I have debated on how much information to share with you about this, and the conclusion I've reached is that I have shared enough. Though, I can say that this was for more than $200, which is enough to get somebody classified as unlovable in my book, right? So, how do I express God's love to one who basically stole from me? Well, the greatest good that a Christian can do is to pray that God might draw that unlovable person unto himself and I prayed that he might do so through me. Now, did you catch that? Through me, the one who has been wronged. See, if God is the source of my joy, my happiness, my completeness, then how can I be so unloving as to not pray for that one who also is in desperate need of his love in their lives? You do not think this to be loving. <laughs> oh, you ought to try it sometime. Offering yourself as the conduit through which God might demonstrate his love to the very one who has wronged you and absolutely meaning it. Yeah, yeah. That is not for the loveless. Uh, see, asking God to bless the one who has harmed you, to provide them with his joy and happiness, and, and that you be allowed to be a part of this? That takes quite a bit. But we are warned against wishing somebody well and not doing anything to actually help that person out. And doing this, but also secretly in the back of your mind, wishing that God will get even with them for the wrongs they have done you. Doesn't count, not at all. See, this involves forgiveness, which we'll discuss in our next video. But for now, Jesus has said that greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. See, laying down one's life, one's right to be avenged for wrongs done, one's sense of fairness at having a wrong righted, one's, well, to phrase it simply, to give up one's right to oneself in order that all might know God, his love and his forgiveness. Now, yes, the ver verses I referenced just then do mention doing this for friends. Yet, Jesus also says many times, love 
your enemies and do good to them. So this applies to our enemies as well. And are not our enemies the unlovable, at least from our perspective? They are to me, and I imagine that I am not that unique in that perspective. See, I was very angry with this individual. Very, very angry. However, Jesus wants me to share his love with this person. And Jesus further explains what he means by loving our enemy when he says, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love the unlovable, do good to them, and pray for them. In other words, we need to learn to love as Jesus loves, not as we would love, but as he actually does. This is an important difference, and only God can teach this to us. And remember, by unlovable, we are talking about anyone who is doing those things which drive us to distraction. This could be found in anybody, really. I mean, it can be in an enemy, a friend, a co-worker, a family member, or even a fellow church member. See, this unloveliness may have annoyed us, embarrassed us, or even greatly hurt us. It is anything that causes us to not to like someone pretty severely. My example is merely the one that came quickest to mind. Thankfully, this is not about being perfect as we do this. Love is not about being perfect. Love transforms us into perfection. Rather, this is about growing in and sharing in God's love. Well, as much as possible and as wisely as possible. We are even told in the Bible that God will help us learn how this is done. It says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, and it will be given to him freely and generously. Again, the Bible says, Ask, ask, and it will be given to you. So, let us pray then. Ask for the wisdom in how to love well. I ask that you pray this for me, even as I will be asking God and praying this for you. For we all need God's wisdom in learning how to love. We need to be asking that God may give us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. And it is as we implement this wisdom that we can then love simply, love wisely, and love well. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced throughout this video in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check up on me, make sure I'm not making anything up or am way out in left field. Also, if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe button, and then make sure to grab that gray notification bell and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, something very, very exciting here, we now have a podcast version of this video available. If you would like to take the podcast version of this or any other video from this point forward, you can go to simplenotshallow.com and download it there, or you can subscribe to it through the podcast service of your choice, you know, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, whichever one you prefer. That way you can listen whenever, wherever, however you'd like. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. And I'll catch you next time.